Hello, it is uh, coffee break with Microchip. Uh, time to take a few minutes out of your otherwise busy day and uh, investigate a trending topic or an idea of interest uh, that might uh, make a difference in your next design. I'd uh, like to welcome everybody back, all our longtime viewers back. It's always great to have you with us. If you are a first time viewer, welcome. Uh, hope you find something here of interest and uh, and keep coming back as well. We like to build the audience and word of mouth is the way to do that. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I uh, hope everybody has their cup of coffee ready, uh, their beverage. Um, today's topic is configurable, <coughs> excuse me, configurable digital gate drivers. Uh, and joining me to talk about that topic is Perry Sugar, one of our power gurus from the Discrete Power Group. Uh, in beautiful where Philadelphia, where I'm told it's it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Perry, uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Great, thank you very much. Great. Glad to be here. Super, and uh, before, as we always do, before we get going, uh, I will turn it over to my partner in crime, Austin, in the booth. Austin, if you can walk the audience through how they can participate in today's show. Yeah, absolutely, Ross. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Perry, good to see you. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. You know, as usual, we are broadcasting live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube with our experts standing by in the chat to field our audience questions. If you are an audience member who prefers to send your questions via email, you may do so at livestream at microchip.com. Once again, that is livestream at microchip.com. And don't forget to subscribe here to our YouTube channel as well as liking and following us on LinkedIn to be the first to know about all things microchip and coffee break. Now, if you were with us this last season, you may already be familiar with this next piece of news, but we are once again giving out a chance to our audience to win a Coffee Break themed mug. So simply click on the link below in the YouTube description, fill out the survey, submit, and you'll have a chance to win. Back to you, Ross. Thank you very much. So Perry, on uh, past shows, We've talked a lot about the Internet of Things, the Internet of Everything, the massive uh, amounts of connections between devices. Uh, but there's, a, there's another Internet of Things or another massive amount of, of connections uh, that's going on in an area that is not talked about as much, but probably should be, and that's power. Can you sort of walk yeah. us through what that looks like and how we address that? Yeah, I mean, we're really seeing the electrification of everything. It's very similar to the Internet of Things where everything's connected digitally, but now we're seeing this happen in power. And uh, that's really been driving needs for higher levels of uh, power fidelity. Basically, loads are becoming more sensitive and there's a growing need for higher levels of control of power. And this is where silicon carbide comes in. Silicon carbide is one of the wide band gap materials that can switch faster than silicon go to higher voltages, and also has uh, better thermal performance in silicon. But it does have some challenges, specifically with the turning on and turning off of these silicon carbide devices. And this is where our digital date gate drivers come in. They're ideally suited for uh, unleashing the full capability of silicon carbide, where the analog method is just too limited in its ability to control it. So let's start and, with- And maybe- Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, maybe as an example, um, in transportation, we're starting to see uh, EVs coming from you know existing, new, and emerging companies. We're seeing uh, buses also becoming much more popular in the electrification of buses. We're seeing wireless charging of the buses, trucks, uh, both small and large, and uh, aircraft are also becoming electrified. Well, I think you and I talked a little bit about this. I'm I'm not getting on an electric airplane anytime soon, but uh, <laughs> the buses and the cars, okay. Uh, airplanes, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give that technology a little bit a uh, little bit more runway, uh, no pun intended. Um, in terms of uh, silicon carbide and these switching, what are some of the benefits to moving to silicon carbide? Well, I mean, silicon carbide, as I mentioned, has a higher switching frequency than than silicon. And if you think of your silicon power switch, you can think of it as maybe the old plow horse on a farm. It was uh, okay for a couple acres, but when you have hundreds of acres, it's just not gonna cut it. You need something much more powerful. And that's where silicon carbide comes in. So silicon carbide is able to switch on a much higher frequency, which gives you uh, one better control. Also it can shrink down in size and it gives you better efficiency. But with that technology uh, comes, um, the need for a different type of uh, gate drive. And that's where the digital uh, gate drive comes in. Analog, as I mentioned, is um, 
uh, too limited its ability to control silicon carbide. So what people do is they have analog drive, uh, they slow the switching down. And what happens is the switch gets hot, becomes inefficient. Uh, you may have to add some filters. So basically you've diluted the performance of silicon carbide and you've added extra cost and size to your system. And with the digital uh, gate driver, we're basically able to unleash that full capability of silicon carbide. So with every technology, you get great benefits, but there's always inherent challenges to using them as well. Can you talk a little bit about what those are with the, with the silicon carbide uh, switches? Yeah, I mean, typically what happens, you got this very high uh, speed uh, switch and you get some uh, noise, some EMI. Uh, silicon carbide is also more sensitive to short circuit, so it needs to be protected more. Uh, with this high speed switching, you do see some over voltage situations. You have ringing and overheating. And as I mentioned, to address this in the analog uh, control, you really have to slow the whole thing down. With digital, it's different. We're able to use our augmented switching as a way of addressing these without sacrificing the performance. So what, is that, what does that look like if, if I were to, to draw this out in a waveform? What, what, would, that, uh, what would that look like? I, I know all the engineers like to, we, we all like to look at yeah. waveforms. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep it simple. So in a silicon switch, basically you're turning on and off. Um, and there's a slope or a turn on time that's set by a gate resistor. And so you can think of this method of turning on, turning off is similar to driving a go-kart where you're basically got your foot on the accelerator full or you got your foot on the brakes uh, full. There's no uh, where in between. So imagine driving to work that way. It's just not feasible. And with our generation one digital gate driver, we added augmented switching to the turnoff. So what happens is we give you another level. So you have two uh, levels of turnoff and you can configure that level to the voltage and time duration you want, depending on what are the specific um, needs of your application. And you can do this by using our intelligent configuration tools, basically uh, an HMI that allows you to go in and set those uh, voltages uh, set the duration. And then as you evolve your system, typically there's always some fine tuning. And if I look at, you know, the analog method, fine tuning means I have to unsolder resistor from the board, which is your gate resistor, solder a new one in and retest. With us, it's more of a, a key click uh, and you've already reconfigured. So in our gen one, we also added an extra level and turn off. So what that does is it really allows you to have that safe landing uh, of, of the uh, switch such that, as I mentioned, silicon carbide is more sensitive to short circuit conditions. Typically in the analog drive, you can see at the top, uh, it's just a linear slope. Uh, this way you can bring it down gradually and, and give it that soft landing. In our Gen 2, basically we added uh, augmented switching on the turn on. So you have two levels of turn on. We added another level on turn off. So you have three levels, all configurable. And then under short circuit condition, uh, we added another level again, uh, giving you that softer turn off. And the idea here is that with this um, augmented switching, you literally can unleash the full capability of silicon carbide versus the analog, which is basically diluting some of the performance to accommodate those challenges. So you mentioned the tool that we offer that, uh, that makes these things uh, a little easier to implement. Uh, power in itself yes. is always a challenge, and this, uh, especially for inexperienced designers or people not familiar with silicon carbide, could be a little bit of a daunting uh, design challenge. What what do we offer for them, and how does that all work? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question because when you look at the analog method, typically you have to design a board, lay out the board, test the board, realize you've got uh, EMI or um, noise-related uh, coupling problems, you relay out again, then you go test. So we replace all that. So what you see here is one of our developer kits. Uh, this one, we call it the ASDAC Plus, actually includes our uh, six uh, SPLI, low inductance silicon carbide power module. And uh, we have an interface board. You can see that red board there. That basically connects the gate driver core, which is the green board on top, to the uh, power module. And to, uh, next to it, you can see our ICT which is our intelligent configuration tool. And the idea is you can go in, um, you decide what module you're doing. We have a catalog of modules that we've already optimized. You download that profile. Uh, if that's the way you wanna go, you can load it right into your uh, gate driver. 
If you need to optimize, basically you can do it by adding in um, uh, data. Uh, you can change your voltages numerically, or we have a graphical interface where you can go in and literally grab the waveform and change the voltage duration with just your, your mouse and then uh, download it into our controller. So the ability to configure uh, your gate drive is really shortened. This, this happens because um, once you develop your power converter, sometimes you need to hook up other things to it for a power system, and you have to reconfigure the gate driver depending on um, the parasitics and inductance of the load. So this allows you to do that fine tuning very quickly. And if you look at, let's say, starting a new design from scratch, um, we're looking at savings up to six months. And when you think of um, a development time for a power converter power system being 14 months to two years, and we're taking six months off the critical path, basically that's starting your whole revenue stream sooner. So, so we're talking not only better performance, but we're talking an ease of design that, that just gets you to market much, much faster. So that sounds like, a, sounds like the right combination for what, our, what customers are looking for. So that's great. So, all right, yeah. well, thanks, thanks for that quick tour. Um, I think uh, we will turn it to Austin in the booth to see if we have any questions from the field. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Ross. We, we certainly do have a question. The first question is going to come by way of email, and that is going to read, how easy is it to transition my design from one silicon carbide module manufacturer to another? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, we're all seeing lead times go out, and uh, especially with power systems, as I mentioned, you know, switching or uh, configuring your power converter for a module is not trivial. But we basically characterize all the modules out there, whether it's ours or somebody else's, and you can download the profile such that, let's say you're using a vendor uh, X's module, you can't get it. You see there's a microchip module available. Uh, basically you get the microchip module, you go into your gate driver ICT uh, program, you download that profile and basically it's already configured. You can always uh, do any adjustments from there, but this really shortens the ability or shortens the time and the effort needed to look at how do I bring on another module into my system. Well, thank you very much, Perry. Um, another question here coming by way of email is, are digital gate drivers, are our digital gate drivers available for 1700 volt switches? Yes, so we have two types of uh, digital gate driver cores. One's a 1200 volt core, the other one's a 1700 volt core. Okay, we're moving through them pretty quickly. And to our audience, remember, go ahead and, and, and leave our questions in the chat. We'll, we'll make sure to uh, answer you as quick as possible. I know we do have a, one or two more here via email, Perry. I think, um, so we'll jump over to email. Uh, how do you configure the augmented switching settings? Yeah, so again, that's really through our uh, ICT software. Um, you can go in there, you can change your voltages, you can change the duration of all your steps. Um, again, this is much easier to do than going into the analog design, which requires you to literally take off resistors, put new resistors on the board, which is also quite time consuming, and then retest. So uh, with, with our ICT, it makes it much easier. Okay, Perry. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to answer some of our audience questions today. And to our audience, if we didn't have a chance to get back to you, make sure to send those questions via email at livestream at microchip.com. Once again, that's livestream at microchip.com. And make sure to check out our description below for some handy dandy links. We'll go ahead and link to not only our survey, which uh, we want to remind our audience to take part in, but also any relative silicon carbide related links. So make sure to check that out. And then also one last reminder here, our good friend Maggie Ford here at Microchip asked me to say that we are hiring many positions here across the organization, uh, so make sure to join our winning team and search for an opportunity if it applies to you. That's all for me, and back to you, Ross. Before I wrap up, I, I do want to point out the uh, that we all did get the memo today on the uh, on the attire. I think this is the first time that we've had everybody in exactly the same thing. It, that wasn't uh, actually wasn't planned, but uh, we'll take credit for it anyway. So. Uh, Everybody's looking sharp today. So, all right, so that wraps up today's episode. This is episode three of season five. Uh, for those of you uh, keeping score at home, uh, you can go find uh, this episode and others on our website, microchip.com slash coffee break. 
Uh, you can see this episode when we post it in the next couple of days. You can leave comments uh, or, or uh, input on that uh, YouTube video or on that video. I guess it's not necessarily YouTube. Um, you can see all of the old episodes. You can go back through the archives and look at everything we've got. And uh, I haven't pointed out in the past, but you can also see the upcoming episodes listed so that you can uh, make sure to add them to your calendar and tune in. So I think that kind of wraps everything up for today. In two weeks, we'll be talking about aerospace and defense topics uh, with, uh, with the team uh, from, from R-A-N-D group. Uh, so tune in for that one. And I guess that just leaves us to say all of our thank yous. So thank you to Perry for joining us. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Sean and David uh, for the production. Thanks to Austin in the booth. Uh, thanks to Claudia, our producer, and our uh, keeps everything moving. And most of all, thank you to our audience, because without you, we've got nothing. We'd all be sitting talking to cameras with nobody at the other end. So we appreciate you taking time uh, out of your day. We hope that these are quick and informative and lead you to uh, new ideas and new design possibilities. So thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Uh, and until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay productive, stay curious, and keep learning. Thanks so much.